Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Our positive quote for the video is, it always seems impossible until it is done. Big thanks to Nelson Mandela for that. Let's get started with the stories. Am I the unreasonable one for snapping at my mom for trying to make me go out with her friend's daughter? I, 28 years old male, broke up with my ex-girlfriend two months, we started drifting apart and our relationship was headed towards a dead end, my mom was one of the reasons my ex and I broke up she hated her and said and done a lot of hurtful things to her though I did everything I could to save our relationship because I cared about my ex and I still have feelings for her, but clearly she doesn't care anymore and I don't blame her at all, a few days ago. My mom called and asked if I could come and spend a few days with her and family because she said I was stressing myself out with this breakup that I'm taking too much time with. I drove 8 hours straight to be with family and be out with friends I haven't seen in a while. My mom started telling me about this girl she sees at the church, I'll call her Livia, she's the daughter of a friend of hers. She told me about how her voice is beautiful and her personality is way better than my ex, basically comparing the two. She said that I should meet up with Olivia and get to know her soon. I just shrugged it off because I wasn't interested in getting into another relationship so fast and especially not like this. My mom saw that and thought she'd take matters into her own hands. She's invited Olivia and her mother to the house twice in one week, had me sit with her and talk. I made it clear that I wasn't interested though Olivia seemed cool so or maybe I don't know what my mom told her. She kept smiling at me, steering the conversation towards personal stuff that I thought was inappropriate. My mom embarrassed me by asking to give Olivia my phone number because mom can't remember her own number, and in case she needed something from her. I was confused, I gave her my mom's eventually. I was polite and kept a nice face as long as I could. But last night, my mom came to talk to me about how I should take a chance and ask Olivia because home visits weren't working. I said no, had an argument and left the room. The next day, mom does it again. She invited Olivia alone to our house and stopped me from going out to go sit with her instead. I lost it I yelled at her and told her that I wasn't interested in entertaining her church friends, that I haven't and will not get over my ex, and that she should stop pushing me to give my number and go out with someone I'm not interested in. I was literally yelling at the door so Olivia heard the whole damn thing, mum was upset, but couldn't stop me from leaving right then. I got a text from mum telling me Olivia had left right after I left and started shaming me for being rude, disrespectful and went on about how I hurt Olivia's feeling cause she heard every word I said. Not the unreasonable one. Olivia got hurt because your mom ignored your thoughts and feelings. Your mom should not have continued inviting Olivia over after you made it clear you weren't interested. Not the unreasonable one. Your mom clearly has no boundaries and is way too involved in your dating life, at 28. Dot. That's really manipulative behavior from your mom. You, however, were really rude by yelling in front of a guest. Seems like Olivia's the innocent bystander in your family drama and it wasn't polite to take that out on her when you were really mad at your mom. Am I the unreasonable one for not trusting my family anymore? Hi all, I had just finished finals for my sophomore year of college and was three days from going home for winter break. I was very excited to see my cat again whom I had had for 19 years and I repeatedly told my mom how excited I was. My mom said he was excited to see me too and she sent me pictures of him the entire week leading up to going home. At some point my dad had mentioned to me that my cat hadn't been feeling well, but every time I asked for updates on he avoided the question. So the day I'm flying home comes, my flight is in two hours and I'm literally walking out of my dorm when I get a call from a number I don't recognize. I decline it and the caller leaves a voicemail which I listen to while I'm in the car with my roommate to go to the airport. The voicemail is from a crematorium letting me know that they have taken care of my cat's remains. I stopped working, I was crying and screaming so loud my roommate thought I was hurt. I didn't understand how he could be dead as my mom had sent me pictures of him that morning saying he was so excited to see me. I called my parents immediately and demanded to know if my cat was dead. My dad got really annoyed and asked how I knew, so I told him the freaking crematorium called me. That's when they told me the truth. Apparently my cat had gotten sick out of the blue to the point where they had to put him down and he had actually been dead for over a week. My mom has taken my number off his vet file so they wouldn't be able to call me, but it had somehow not been taken off the one the crematorium got. 
Then she and my dad had gotten pictures of him they had taken while I was away and were sending those to me to convince me he was still alive. They even contacted friends and family to play along if I brought him up so they could break the news when I was home surrounded by their love. I was telling family members left and right how much I missed my cat as I had never been without him and they all acted like they had no idea he was actually dead. When I finally got back home my parents were furious I was upset with them because I didn't appreciate all they did for me to spare my feelings and they knew if they told me I would have failed all of my finals. They said they knew me better than I knew myself and they did the right thing. Anytime I tried to bring it up to them or even just cried because I missed him they would ask me why I'm being so dramatic. It's been two years and although I've come to terms with it I still don't feel I can trust them or the people they got to lie to me. If someone in my family tells me the sky is blue I feel I have to go outside and check for myself. My aunt told me today that I'm paranoid and disrespectful to my family because I always try to verify what they tell me now. Am I the a-hole for not being able to trust them anymore? Not the unreasonable one it would be one thing if they just didn't say anything for a week, but to send you pictures and have other people lie to you is messed up, and to be annoyed by your sadness over the loss of your pet isn't in your best interest either, however I feel like, for your sake, make peace with what has happened, how you do that is up to you. Not the unreasonable one, true your parents couldn't stop the cat from dying. However going through such lengths to hide the death of OP's cat to the point of even take OP's phone number off the vet file so the vet couldn't call OP. Getting others involved in believing she was still alive. Yeah no wonder OP doesn't trust them and I'd be furious too. OP has every right to hold a grudge. By hiding her number from the vet they couldn't call OP for say a video all to say her final goodbyes to her dear kitty before she had to be put down. Am I the unreasonable one for refusing to support my niece's lifestyle? My sister and her husband were sent to prison at the start of this year, and sadly won't be released for a few years. That left me to look after their 15-year-old daughter Amy. I was perfectly happy to do this, but as most of their wealth was seized for being ill-gotten, it's meant that I've been having to care for her out of my own pocket. Once again this doesn't bother me, but it's meant massive life changes for the kid. Firstly, they sent her to a private school. I can't afford anywhere near those fees, so I had to transfer her to a local school. She was upset at this at first, but she quickly made friends and is excelling academically so this isn't a huge problem. She's been off school for the last few months anyway due to the situation. A bigger problem is clothing. Like my sister Amy loves fashion and designer stuff. She's still got a lot of stuff that her parents got her, but she's always on the lookout for new clothes. Unfortunately, I can't afford anywhere near the sort of stuff she likes. And I also have two children of my own whose clothing I have to pay for. I have told my sister this, but she insists I should make allowances because her daughter is going through a tough time. Amy also really doesn't get along with my daughter Hannah, who is 11. She bullies her, calls her stupid and ugly, tells her none of her friends really like her etc. She has made her cry on many occasions and often continues to taunt Hannah while she cries. Yesterday I caught Amy trying to buy a dress costing over a thousand with my card. I was fuming and had a long conversation with her. She cried, and sobbed that she just wanted one nice thing. My sister called from the prison, and Amy cried over the phone that she hates here and I treat her unfairly. I spoke to my sister afterwards and she begged me to go easy on her daughter because she's still adjusting. I put food on this kid's plate. I buy her whatever clothes I can afford, even if they aren't to her taste. I take her to visit her parents as much as possible. They're held in different facilities, and I do all of that on top of working and looking after my own children. I told my sister that I was willing to look after her daughter for as long as she needs, but if anything like the card incident happens again, or if she continues to pick on my daughter, there will be serious consequences for her. My sister wanted to argue, but they get limited time on the prison phone. I think what I'm doing is right. I get that the kid is going through a tough time, and I'm doing everything I can to be there for her, but I can't just tolerate bad behavior or bullying and I can't afford to pay for her expensive clothing. The fact that she's struggling to deal with what happened to her parents doesn't change that. Not the unreasonable one, obviously, but how are you supporting this child's transition? Is she in therapy yet? Not the unreasonable one, your sister is at a whole new level of entitlement here. Her own choices have placed Amy in this situation, and it's fallen on you to care for her. You have stepped up and it sounds like you're doing a bang up job. Your responsibilities are to ensure that Amy is fed, clothed, housed, educated, and loved slash supported. You're doing all those things. Your responsibilities do not extend to buying Amy designer clothing, much less a dress that costs $1,000 if you are on a budget. Amy is indeed going through a tough time, but she needs to learn a couple of tough lessons. Namely, your income can't cover the same lifestyle that her mother's ill-gotten funds did. She is not owed designer clothes, 
using your credit card without your permission is absolutely stealing, and is not justified by wanting one nice thing. Good for you for role have modeling some sane and reasonable values for this poor girl before she grows up to repeat all of her mother's mistakes. Am I the unreasonable one for ruining my wife's birthday trip by insisting either our son comes or no one goes? Long story, but I'll keep this brief. My wife's birthday was two weekends ago. We had planned to go on a long camping trip, six days, and everything was all set and paid for, roughly three days before departing. My wife got into another huge fight with our 12 year son. They've been getting into small arguments and butting heads more and more, but nothing like this. Apparently he was playing Minecraft on her laptop and downloaded something that crashed the computer. Nothing too terrible, but my wife was worried her computer was permanently broken, so there was a pretty easy solution to everything, go to a repair shop. But like always it devolved into a massive fight between them because our son was adamant he didn't do anything wrong and my wife was adamant he did. It eventually got so bad my wife threatened to send him to stay with our neighbor by himself while we went on our trip if he doesn't confess. He says fine leave without me. So my wife made up her mind to actually leave him with the neighbor for 6 days while we go on our trip. I tried to mediate, but it's the night before and my wife is still set on dropping him off at the neighbors. He's also upset and has packed his stuff in preparation. At this point I basically put my foot down and said there's no way in hell we're actually doing this. This is insane. We're a family. And if we can't go together we shouldn't go at all. Long story and lots of drama short, the trip was cancelled. My wife refused to let our son come along and I refused to leave him behind. As a result she's accused me of ruining the one week this year that she's been excited for. I don't know if I did the right thing in the end. Update, to everyone asking about how the laptop broke. It's a really old computer and my wife accidentally spilled orange juice over it roughly a year ago when the problem started. The computer honestly crashes all the time. I've got no doubt my son's games overtaxed it and crashed it again, but I don't think his games were to blame for the problems starting. Edit 2. My son did have permission to play games and download specific mods related to the game, limited to a site we trust, without our knowing. So he didn't really break any rules by playing the game or downloading. But the laptop was in increasingly poor shape and what used to be fine no longer was. My wife just seemed to forget about all the other times the laptop crashed and pinned every problem on this one instance. Everyone sucks here. Going to a repair shop may be an easy solution to the problem of the broken computer, but it doesn't resolve the issue of your son downloading something he shouldn't have and, edit, potentially, lying about it. I think excluding him from the trip was an overreaction. But I also think you failed to have your wife's back in what was partly a disciplinary issue. Like always it devolved into a massive fight. If this is the norm, your family needs therapy. I don't mean that flippantly. You need to find better ways to resolve problems. If your son's now 12, it's not going to get any easier as he enters the teen years. Gonna have to give this and everyone sucks here. Unfortunately, your TA for undermining your wife's parenting. Kids pick up on discourse between parents and will absolutely use that against them. You wife is DA for escalating a situation and making a threat of punishment that she didn't clear with you first. You both have to be on the same page when it comes to punishments and how to enact them. Your son is DA because he crashed the computer, possibly even damaged it. Most kids will deny that they caused damage because they fear the consequences. It isn't like this 100% of the time, but until you take the computer in to be analyzed. You can't know for certain that he didn't damage it. Your wife does have every right to be upset that your son downloaded something that may have caused it to crash. Taking it to the repair shop is definitely the best choice, but at some point you're going to have to stop mediating and start presenting as a united front with your wife. The two of you need to get together and figure out the details of how to handle the situation away from your son before either of you, especially her, start threatening punishments. Also, this trip was meant to be a gift to your wife for her birthday. The fact that you cancelled it entirely means that you're siding with your son over your partner. I'm not going to get into the right and wrong of that. But at this point your son now knows that the two of you are not united and will take that information moving forward. ETA. Go away for one day and this whole thing blows up. Let me clarify one thing. Presenting as a united front does not mean that you agree 100% with each other. What it actually means is for the parents to remove themselves from the situation. Discuss the best course of action away from the child and then come to a compromise on what should happen. I didn't say that the mom was blameless. She shouldn't have been making threats without first discussing it with OP. That being said, the boy had clearly caused the issue this time. Frankly speaking, it could have been a prime opportunity for the family to have a teachable moment about how to handle computers in a delicate manner. Especially when the machines are old and on the fritz like this. Honestly OP. It probably would be best for you to simply get a new one. 
Plus you could also buy parts and help your son learn how to build one from the ground up so he can have a better appreciation for the machine itself. However that's just one suggestion. Either way, I still stand by my ESH judgment. The mom sucked for blowing this out and threatening to leave the child with the neighbor. There is no excuse for that, period. The child sucked for refusing to acknowledge that his download did cause the crash on this one instance. That's a lack of accountability that he needs to learn how to handle in the future rather than picking a fight with his mother and blowing this up. OP sucked for just cancelling the trip rather than letting the wife go on her own so that she could get some time away from the son and for things to cool down. Regardless all of the family needs therapy at this point. OP, there's much you guys as a family aren't addressing, namely the resentment that's built up between your wife and son. That has to be addressed yesterday. Am I the unreasonable one for not letting my boyfriend stay overnight at my new flat? So I, 23 years old female, and my boyfriend, 21 years old male, of 2, 5 years currently live together in a flat, just us two, and have done for a year. The tenancy is finishing in 2 weeks and he's decided he wants to move back home to save money and because he point blank refuses to house share which means I now have to find a room somewhere. Also, we have to move out in 2 weeks, there is no option for staying. We've just graduated uni, he's on furlough from a casual job, but not being paid as it's zero hours, and I'm not working, but we're both actively searching. I've had an interview for full time that was crap, and he's done a trial shift that was crap. Problem is, we don't have any form of income right now, I'm planning on renting a room from my savings and paying up front for a 2-3 to three months as a guarantee, and hope and pray I find a job before then because if not, my money's run out haha. He's going back to do a masters and I wanted to work full time. So he's moving home to live with his mom, while I work full time and pay for my flat slash house share. I've said to him, if he wants to move home, I'm not happy with it at all because I still am going to have to house share and realistically he'll be more or less house sharing with me anyway, getting to know the people living there, sleeping, eating here and there. But now I've decided if he doesn't want to live with me, he doesn't get the benefits of sleeping there so he doesn't have to commute to uni, I'm not gonna cook him his meals after lectures or whatever and he's not taking up valuable space in the fridge or freezer I'm paying for, he's not storing clothes in my minimal space or moving his games consoles into my room like he did before we lived together. He's not happy about it, and thinks I'm being totally unreasonable and I think I'm being kinda tough, but reasonable. So, am I the unreasonable one? Also, a few of you have mentioned it's risky renting a new place. I know this don't worry, but I have to, I have no family in this country. My family are overseas in a place with really high unemployment so going home to save money is out of the question. I have to leave the current flat in 2 weeks, so if I don't rent somewhere else I'll have nowhere to go. I really don't want to live with his parents as they don't live in the same city. Claiming benefits is out of the question while I live with him is out of the question as his savings are too high that I no longer qualify. He's getting student loan, and he's spending it on a car, but he can't afford rent even though I've offered to pay a higher share because I'd be working full time. It's just so difficult because neither of us are financially secure so it's much harder than it usually would be. He makes some good points, as do I, so I wanted to know am I the unreasonable one or not smile. Not the unreasonable one, he made it clear he doesn't want to pay for it, but wants the benefits of it anyway, you might want to look for a new boyfriend while you're at it. Not the unreasonable one, I agree with you OP, this is tough love and a part of life. You've paid for this space with your savings and he hasn't. It's his own decision to not house share. He has no money to support himself and the accommodation you're paying for so would be living on what you can provide. At your age this isn't something you need to deal with yet. Be selfish in these moments and there is plenty of time to live together if your relationship surpasses this difficult time in your life. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories delivered to you. Thanks for listening. See you later.